Modern gaming sucks. Well, it did suck. And today, we're going to talk about the three games that saved gaming, as well as the three things that they did to do it. 2023 had its fair share of disappointments in gaming. <laughs> I want you to think back to a game you were super excited for last year. A game that had a cool trailer, tons of hype surrounding it, and then it finally comes out and you get to- I just moosh it with my mind. Oh, hell no. Broken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing. Oh, I yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic. <laughs> oh. I'm picking on for spoken, but there were so many games just like this last year. Redfall, Diablo 4, Payday 3, Starfield. The list goes on. And while some of those games weren't bad, they couldn't live up to the hype, even with millions of dollars put into game development. Which is why it shocked the world when three games with basically zero hype took the gaming world by storm. And these three games each demonstrate one reason on why they saved gaming. Number one, return on investment. If you haven't played Buckshot Roulette, the premise is pretty simple. You essentially play Russian Roulette with a shotgun, taking turns either shooting the dealer or shooting yourself. While it sounds simple, the game adds a ton of items that change how you play, easter eggs to find, and even a new double or nothing game mode. The game took me about 30 minutes to beat on my first playthrough, but I enjoyed the concept so much that I ended up doing a perfect run challenge, where I couldn't get shot once during the entire run. This added another grueling 8 hours of gameplay for me, and I finally felt content with the game. Buckshot Roulette cost me a hefty one dollar and twenty cents the new industry standard for triple a games is a price tag of seventy dollars now don't get me wrong buckshot roulette is not some perfect 10 out of 10 game that you'll play for hours and tell your kids and grandkids about but for a dollar and twenty cents you really get your money's worth for reference that's about one sixtieth of the cost of Forspoken or Redfall. Now I can guarantee you that you won't get 60 times the enjoyment of Buckshot Roulette out of either of those games. In fact, I'd argue I got 60 times more enjoyment from Buckshot Roulette than I did from either of those games. And this game did really well. I saw tons of the top creators on YouTube and Twitch playing this game and the idea that a game can be successful without spending millions of dollars on development will hopefully set a precedent in gaming that puts the content before the price. The next game I want to talk about is Lethal Company. And Lethal Company saved gaming with one key idea. Frictionless freedom. Now, what do I mean by frictionless freedom? Well, essentially, frictionless freedom, now trademarked by yours truly, is the idea that a game doesn't get in its own way. For example, time and time again, games try to throw as many gameplay elements as they can into a game and see what sticks. Oh, you have a normal character? Well, let's give them guns, magic spells, mini maps, hot bars, skill trees. Oh, let's throw a battle pass in there, why not? Soon enough, one screen can start to look like this. And no matter how many tutorials or hints the game throws at you, the game constantly feels like it's trying to be something it's not. Lethal Company lets its gameplay speak for itself. The game is simple. You and your friends work for the company, where you have to collect scrap from buildings filled with monsters and traps. The game has no tutorial, no hints, and no explanation for when things go wrong. You truly have no limits on how you want to play. I think we've got all the loot we need. Now yeah, you, go, you go in and check for us, Spencer. Go in, come back here, tell us yeah. it's good. Yeah, tell us it's okay. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you are, uh... Bleeding you good? <laughs> <laughs> Some rounds I'd be the man in the chair with a walkie-talkie and a radar. Other times I'd run through the dark with no means of direction, hoping to find some good loot. And sometimes, my friends and I would just screw around, forgetting about the objective entirely. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate you, Jackson! I fucking hate you! 
The immersive gameplay combined with the amazing proximity chat allows you to really feel like you're in the game. It's not trying to be something it's not. The last game I want to talk about is Power Worlds. And Power Worlds developers put the player first. I'm not here to talk about all of the similarities between Pokemon and Pokemon with guns, because believe it or not, that's not where the fun of Power World comes from. Power World is so much fun because the developers knew that their product would fill a hole in people's hearts. People like me that grew up with Pokemon games. I remember playing Pokemon Black 2 on my DS and being blown away. There were so many Pokemon to catch, moves to learn, trainers to fight. I mean, it was the first time I really felt like I could do anything in a game. But that was 10 years ago. And Pokemon isn't as glamorous as it used to be. Game Freak got comfortable and stopped pushing the boundaries of exploration the way it did when I was a kid. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the most recent game, attempted to break into the open world genre, and it was a disappointment. The developers of Power World decided to do something about it. And it worked. I mean, just look at the sales. This is how many units Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sold in the past year. And this is how many Power World has sold. In three weeks. It's obvious that Power World has struck a chord with players. However, this chord only lasted a few bars since the game has lost 75% of its players since its peak in late January. It seems as if people got their hit of nostalgia and ran out of things to do in the game. Power World's community manager, Bucky, went to Twitter to respond to this massive drop off in players. But instead of pleading for players to come back, he said this. Some of you may have had your fun over the last three weeks and found yourself putting the game down. That is fine. He goes on to explain that new content will come. These things take time. Power World's team understands that the whole reason their game became popular was because it delivered on what gamers actually wanted. They know that if they pump out content in a desperate attempt to save players, they'll lose everyone. These three games challenge the current norms in the gaming industry. They signal a shift in focus, a move away from the obsession with inflated budgets, cluttered gameplay mechanics, corporate detachment. Instead, they advocate for a return to the core principles of gaming. The principles that made all of us love gaming in the first place. Delivering fun experiences that allow the player to truly immerse themselves in the game. These games serve as a rally cry for developers to embrace innovation, embrace simplicity, and embrace player-focused development. These games that saved modern gaming aren't just anomalies. They're precursors to an entire shift in the gaming industry. A shift back to its roots that will forge a new path toward a brighter future in gaming. Thanks for watching.